I cared about love I'm not the guy who cared about fortunes and such Never cared much, oh look at me now I never knew the technique of kissing I never knew the thrill I could get from your touch I never cared much, oh look at me now I had always really wanted to do a show at the Temple Theater I think it's a very unique venue here that is underutilized. Uh, it's this beautiful 250 seat spot um, in one of the coolest spots of Des Moines down there. Uh, well, and so, to get people, like, it's still intimate, but it still can get some people in there. Yeah, it's got a cool and vibe. it's still got that classy vibe to it. Um, and I came to Roxy in about, I don't know, end of December or January or something. Right? Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, yeah sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, we met it at Sands Bars. And um, kind of broached the idea, and she she was so excited. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. But you know that's how all those things start. Uh, you got to just throw out this crazy idea, and so we started trying to get the money together and meeting with the civic center to see if they were interested, and they were, which is very. That's kind of a special thing to um, to be able to work with that organization. I mean. They've been really great nice. in throwing yeah. their support behind this project. And that's yeah. Wonderful. And to support the local scene like that, that's very cool. I came here from college, and this is where like I, I really started out. Um, I started playing shows, and people were fantastic. The response was great. The musical community was incredibly supportive. Um, I met a lot of musicians who kind of took me under their wing, showed me how uh, how things were done, and helped me meet other people. So really, the last few years, I've been trying to build outward. I started out just playing shows in Des Moines, and then kind of spread to uh, the rest of the Midwest over the last few years, and wrapped up uh, like a I think a 15 city tour, April. Um, and so since then, I've been kind of working on this show and making plans to the West Coast and do some touring out there. Uh, I'm hoping to add the West Coast to my fan base so that when I do the national tour, it truly is national and encompasses, you know, the West and the Midwest. So. Kind of the plan along with some uh, a new album that I'm working on. I felt kind of an urge to go go ahead and kind of get started on, on these big plans that I've got. So, uh, I will be, I'll be heading off to Atlanta here the week after our show is done. Actually, the very day after we're done, <laughs> I will be moving down there to visit some apartments I've been looking at. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a city that's doing really well in these hard times. And it's kind of a gateway to the south for touring purposes. Right before I went to high school, I went on this trip with a choir from Des Moines, the Heartland Youth Choir, which was a great organization to be a part of. We went to New York, and it was part of this festival for American music, and uh, we ended the tour, and it, all the, it was mostly like juniors and seniors in high school, and my, my voice had changed early, so I was in this group. And uh, we did a concert at Carnegie Hall, and you know, I, I, in some ways I was still like too young to really get, identify, you know, like really these strong feelings that I had for all this. But I can remember even thinking then when that was done, I thought, oh my God, if I can just like make it back here someday. Just a few months ago, you know, I sat in with a band in Chicago in this really nice club on the north side and it wasn't anything fantastic or anything, but I just thought right then, I thought, uh, you know, me five or six years ago, would, uh, my jaw would drop to even think that this stuff has even happened. Um, so again, I, I can't identify one moment, but every once in a while, there's just a time where you just realize, you know, you might just come on stage and think, God, I am pretty lucky to be doing this. This feels great. When I was four, um, my dad used to play in these Dixieland jazz bands, and he's a judge, but on the side, on weekends, he would go to these Dixieland festivals. And sometimes the guys would have me up to sing with them. 
and um, I remember that they called me up and I was very small, I was four, and I uh, went up on stage and I sang Bill Bailey. And I'd, oh yeah, seriously, I sang Bill Bailey, won't you come up with Bill Bailey? And it was so much fun, I loved it. And I've been taking, I started piano lessons that year, and I'd always been into music and always listened to my dad and you know, sang all the time, but being up there on stage and singing with the band was one of those defining moments. I think there are a number uh, in anyone's career where they know they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, and it was probably cemented by the fact that after the show, my dad was like, hey, music is wonderful. Uh, it's probably going to be the love of your life, but make sure you do it on the side. Uh, don't you dare do it as a full-time career, because it would be crazy. Uh, yep, yep. So once he said that, I think I was pretty well done for, and I was going to be a musician. Dad said not to. There you have it. Sometimes I wonder how this could make 